if I get a report like that, if somebody files a complaint and, and I determine that, that it's un, not just unfounded, but it was done so um, in bad faith, that person will be subject to sanctions, right? Academic freedom. Um, yes, we cannot tell you how you are to teach your classes. Um, you know, obviously you have to have, to have the um, ability to convey the material as you deem appropriate and fit. However, you know, there are federal laws, there are state laws, um, and we really, like I said, want to work on having a safe and healthy campus culture. So just make sure that you, as you formulate how you will uh, communicate with your students, how you will present the material, that that balance remains, right? Uh, you know, we don't want to want to follow PIPA, PERPA, and other laws that would apply to the content or, or what you say or the communications that you use in, school, uh, in your classes. One thing I see a lot and I wish we could stop is the no handle of attorney, right? Um, especially when the allegations are against another colleague. There's a lot of, let's just, you know, squash this right here, you know, you say sorry, you say sorry, and, and we're done. That never looks good. It especially doesn't look good when it's done over email, and I get that email and there's a whole threat of that, okay? Because at this point, now you just made a very nice little lawsuit for all of us. Um, so, this <laughs> people love to put really bad things into emails, I don't know why, but um, just keep in mind that any type of such activity or conduct looks like you're trying to hide it, right? Um, and if one person or one party at one point decides, you know what, I'm gonna go to the press, I'm, I'm gonna go and, and file a lawsuit, they're gonna say, you know, that that won't really play out well in court because they, they'll, it will look like you try to dissuade that person from filing a complaint or try to hide it and then, um, you know, the university would basically be in trouble in that regard. So we're not the mob, we're not gonna, you know, keep what you're in the family, right? I mean, we really <laughs> need to just report it to me and then so that we can say, nope, we heard about it, we looked into it, it's done. Don't play telephone. Um, what I often see is, let's say one faculty member hears something or knows something or was told something, they then tell another faculty member in their department who then goes and tells the dean and then somehow, at some point, 10 minutes, 10 people later, I'm being made aware of. Now 12, 20 people know that person's business and it's not, it's not good, right? So what, what I'm um, asking of you is that the minute you get, you become aware of a situation, please come straight to me so that we can keep uh, privacy and confidentiality, you know, intact. All right, reporting. As faculty members, all of us, uh, all of you guys, and all of us, well, not you, um, are under the law, under Title IX, we're, we're deemed responsible uh, employees, basically mandated reporter, that's what that uh, boils down to. Um, and as such, right? So you are responsible employees, so are um, all the athletic staff members, um, all uh, our um, police department um, people, um, really anybody, and that's kind of how the law um, defines it, anybody a student would assume can stop the uh, violation from happening. That's basically all of us, all of us adults in the room, right? Um, so as a responsible employee, um, you have to report anything that you become aware of. Be it you witnessing it yourself, um, somebody coming and telling it to you, or you just overhearing it. That's very broad, right? You just, I mean, you could literally just walk across the quad and hear people talk about something having um, ha happened, and that enough, that would be enough to honor, un unfortunately, other lawsuits, um, schools have been deemed to have had notice by, just simply by overhearing. So I just want to make sure that everybody is aware of that. Also, failure to report, if we do find out that you knew or were told or had knowledge and you didn't report, that will subject you to sanctions as well. The only people who do not have that requirement are Dr. Bridges Carter, so any counselors, and um, any chaplains. They are not required to do so because they um, are 
vested with uh, confidentiality that can be that's basically like you know priests like you can't break it unless we have some concerns about safety right um, but every all of us the rest of us we do have to report it and are um, including that group of people um, what I have noticed on the faculty is well he she did not file a formal complaint she didn't write it down so I didn't report it to anybody like I said the minute you hear it you have to report it that you don't even you don't need to actually confront that person and ask, well, is that true and what happened and whatnot? That person does not have to write it down. Um, so it literally is the minute you hear it, you need to report to me um, and let me know that that happened. So there's not this requirement that it has to be in written form or that it even has to be a form of conversation with you and the person who alleged is the quote unquote victim, right? The minute you hear anything, it's it's really compulsory. You just have to let me know that. You, you heard about this or you were told this and then I take it from there. Um, whether you think it's a rumor, whether you think it's BS, it doesn't matter. It is not your job to assess the credibility of what you hear. That's my job. So again, the minute you hear it, you let me know. And if it's BS, it's BS and, it's, and we're done. I do my investigation and I come to that conclusion, but it's not yours to make, okay? That's another reason why it's important that any report be made in good faith. Because this is a serious thing. It can absolutely sully someone's reputation, to put it mildly. And so it's why it's important to, if something is being reported, that it is being reported in good faith. Um, because to just do something like that frivolously is very um, insensitive, to put it mildly, I would say. Rude. And just, I know we kind of uh, skipped over what to report, but you know, as much information as possible, obviously, is the, the golden rule, right? So who, what, where, when, um, you know, especially if um, weapons were involved, drugs were involved, um, alcohol was involved, you know, we need to know these things, again, for the clear reporting um, uh, mandates that we have to follow. Who can you report to? So obviously, if it's, very severe, like a rape um, or you know any other type of battery. Obviously, we, you can call CPD um, for those who may be on field trips, study abroad, um, you know, uh, going to other conferences. Um, not conferences. Um, if you're athletic staff, um, when you're traveling, you know, obviously call the local um, police. Um, here, you can also call um, our police department as well. Again, you can contact the people you see on the screen. Obviously. Um, contact me first. Um, we have had incidents where police was called um, and then they will let me know or I will also be called or I'm called and usually, and we'll talk about this later, I will ask the person if you want to file a criminal complaint, you know, or a kind of like plain or both. If it's, again, if the person, um, the respondent, the person who, you know, initiated the, the conduct, excuse me, is staff, um, you can talk to your supervisor um, um, or directly with me or Robin Hawkins, our ethics officer or, or HR. Um, what we want to make sure is that people understand that as responsible employees, uh, we cannot maintain confidentiality to a certain point. Um, again, the only people who can are counselors and chaplains. Um, but let's say you're sitting in your office or you know, it's the end of class and a student comes up and tells you, is about to tell you something and you can kind of tell they're about to tell you something that's hard for them to say. What, we ask, what we're asking you to do is to stop them and explain to them that if they're telling you something you know, of whatever nature that you think this is going, that you have the, uh, that you're mandated to report it out. You have to let them know that you cannot keep confidential names of the parties involved, right? and that you have to report it out, just so that they understand that you're not like breaking their you know, trust or anything like that, but they, need, they, they do need to know um, that you would have to report this out to, to me. Um, and um, so yeah, so that's basically what we're saying. And what I tell them is you know, I try to, we try to keep um, things obviously as confidential as, and private as possible um, as, as far as it's allowed under the law. If I have to share it with law enforcement or you know, anybody else on campus um, in order to uh, address the situation that you know will have to happen. Um, if the person who is letting you know um, about something 
is not any of the two parties involved, or I should say two, there could be more people. Um, but you might want to encourage them if they if they don't want to, you know, if they're afraid about being known as the reporter, you let them know that they can uh, report anonymously. So not only do we have um, a uh, anonymous hotline that goes basically to our campus police department. It's a voicemail. It's not going to be a live person if they're if the the reporting person is afraid of that. It's a voicemail that says, thank you for calling. Just tell us what happened, you know, and we'll take it from there. That's basically, in a nutshell, what that message says. Uh, we now also have a Title IX page, finally, on our website. And um, there is a um, report that you can fill out online without having to identify who you are. So um, let them know that that exists. And um, so we have, a, yeah, we have a few, um, different scenarios that are available on the PowerPoint that you all receive. Um, and it just are scenarios to, um, to kind of uh, ascertain whether or not a person would feel that in this situation they should report or not. So um, just read this for like a minute and um, we'll just do a raise of hands for if folks think they would report this or not. It says, <laughs> You are in your office and one of the, your students barges in almost out of breath and says, Professor, listen about what I just heard. I know it's not my place, but I thought you should know. You know that student who sits in the last row, Paul? Sorry if I need Paul's in the room. <laughs> he supposedly groped Liz when we were walking out of the classroom. Do you report? Who would report that? Yes, this is something you report immediately. So all hands should have gotten up right there. <laughs> so again, I mean, in your head, you know, it's hearsay, it's that. I don't care. I don't care. At that point, CSU has officially had notice. Whether you believe it or not, whether who told you, you know, is known as a liar or somebody who likes to be dramatic for no reason, it still has to be reported, okay? Um, and there are other scenarios, obviously, but I mean, the, the, the point is report. And you know, it, that, that's just, you know, the rule of thumb is just, is just to report. Um, as far as, you know, how or how you can file, or what can, what can be filed when something does happen, you know, we just wanna make sure that you know what the options are. So um, when I call in or when I'm being made aware um, of something having happened, um, what I usually do is I call in the person who was the, on the receiving end of the conduct, right? And I ask that person whether they want to file a report. Um, I explain to them what their options are um, between the criminal complaint, a Title IX complaint, um, and reporting or, or filing a complaint with state <coughs> To be clear, that person has the choice to do all three of those or none of those. On the VAWA, you cannot force somebody to make a complaint. So usually what I tell the person is these are your options. Criminal obviously goes to court. Um, Title IX is administrative and it's internal and, and stays here on campus basically. Um, and then the state obviously is a few levels up um, and again, it's, it's more of an involved process and longer process usually um, than the other two. Let's say the person says, well, I didn't even want to be in the first place. You know, I, I, you know, I just want to be done with it and not have to think about this anymore and so forth and so forth. What I then say is, um, I respect how you feel um, and I have the word at all to not to continue my investigation if that is what you wish. But at the end of the day, I represent the university. So if I think that the person, the respondent, the, the alleged, you know, pers the person who allegedly um, perpetrated the, the conduct, basically, if I believe that that person has done this before, or might do it again, or may pose a danger to the person that's in front of me, so the, 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 the complainant, um, or to the greater campus community, I will continue my investigation. I do not need that person's 
participation, nor do I need the respondent's participation. So I can do my 